All right. Why don't we get started now? Um, before I start today's lecture, I wanted to introduce Colin, who's one of our uh, section leader coordinators. And he's going to speak for a couple of minutes about uh, our section leading program, in case any of you are interested in signing up to be a section leader. So take it away, Colin. Thanks, Marty. Oops, wait. <laughs> you're not going to give my link list presentation. Here, that's, that's what you're <laughs> There you go. Go ahead. All right, hi. So as Marty mentioned, my name is Colin. I'm one of the coordinators in the section leading program. And I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you all about section leading and encourage you all to apply. Because as 106X students, you are all now eligible to apply to section lead, which can seem like really overwhelming if you are like just in your first quarter at Stanford and you're already ready to teach, but you are. So we just wanted to remind you that there's no standard image of what a section leader looks like, uh, no matter your major, intended major, or any other identities you hold. If you're interested in applying, we would really love to see your application. So. I'm going to skip over the logistics and requirements of what section leaders do because you've all had at least one section leader in this class, but a couple of quick points. Um, this is a paid job, and it is at least a two-quarter commitment. And any other questions you have uh, can be answered in, probably in these slides, but looking at them after the lecture. Um, so reasons to section lead. As someone who's potentially interested in a career in education, there's really no better on-the-job experience I can imagine than section leading and getting to teach students at Stanford um, you also get to learn a lot about computer science while you section lead. Uh, it's really been incredible the amount that I've learned from my students and from like having to review topics as I go to teach them later on. Um, even among Stanford TA positions, like this is incredible because you get to work with students like one on one in sections and in IGs and track people's progress and see how they grow, and that's really incredible. Um, we have a lot of events that I'll talk about a little bit in a second. Uh, the group of section leaders is a really wonderful group of people. I've had a lot of really, really close friends from the section leaders, and they're not only like, kind people, but also really, really smart, and I get to work with them on all my CS classes, and that's like super cool for me. Um, and finally, in terms of like legacy, when I think about the past four years, four plus years that I've spent at Stanford, like what it comes down to for me is all the people I've gotten to introduce to computer science and like get excited about these things that I care about so much. So. It's been really awesome, personally. Um, events we have, so we have this, lots of silly traditions, including Lair Formal, where toward the end of the quarter, we sort of like dress up and storm the Lair and help a lot of people, but also eat snacks and hang out, and it's super fun. Um, also have uh, events with companies such as Google. We had this Iron Chef event where we actually just go to the Google campus and cook their food for an hour and hang out and eat, and it's really fun. And we have lots of events like that, including like Microsoft Boat Cruise, but also events with companies that are not super big tech. So if you're interested in like Khan Academy or IXL Learning, the education side, we got you covered there too. Um, finally, you're joining this legacy of really awesome people who have been section leaders, uh, including all these tech executives and also professors like Miran Sahami and doctors and authors and like lots of awesome people who are like good to uh, have in your corner. So. Um, Applications are open. They're due uh, just over a week from now. If you have questions about the application process or any of the requirements or anything, you're welcome to email us at this uh, email address. Uh, I think this will all be in the slides. And other than that, uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, we would have time for a question or two. Do you, do you guys have any quick questions for Colin about the sexual aid program or blind work? Tell you first. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in doing it in spring, but not necessarily in the winter. Is that like still okay when I apply now, or should I apply later on? You should apply later on. Um, if you think there's any chance you would be like down to do it in the winter, you should probably apply now because it's very common for people not to get it on their first try. I didn't get it my first try, um, but as soon as you do get accepted, like we expect you to do it um, two quarters starting that quarter. Mm -hmm. Um, similarly, if you want to wait till next year, you'll want to apply in the spring or whatever quarter is like the quarter prior to when you want to start. All right, thanks, Colin. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much for letting me talk. I, I wanted to add two cents real quickly that um, you know I myself was a section leader a long time ago. Not here at Stanford. I didn't get into Stanford, <laughs> but oh well. Um, <laughs> no, I was such a leader at another university, and um, I really liked it. It was really fun working with students. It, it was, I, was, I loved that I got to help other people, and I got to work with their code and help other students. I got to know a bunch of cool people, like Colin said. 
and they paid me. I was like, really? You're willing to pay me? This is fun. It doesn't feel like a job. Yeah, you get paid. Yeah, you get paid. Yes. What? I know, I know. I know. The best paying jobs on campus for an undergrad, just putting that there. It's not a bad deal. And, and I will say, um, not only was it fun, but I don't think I would be standing here if I hadn't done that. I mean, I think that's what got me excited about education and teaching, and it led me up through the ranks. And then I was a grad student. I got to teach a class in the summer. And the next thing I knew, I was applying for a job as an instructor. And, and now you guys are all stuck with me. So uh, um, it, it really had an impact on, on my life. So I would certainly love to see a lot of you guys apply. I had somebody in my office the other day asking me about it. And he said, like, you guys probably aren't very likely to hire somebody as early as me, right? Because I'm just in 106X. You probably want somebody who's like a junior or a senior or something. And I mean, no, we hire lots of people who are just like you. And so, yes, you have a chance of being picked. Um, if you want to wait for whatever reason, because it fits your schedule better or because whatever, that, that's fine. But um, just out of 106X, I mean, if you're doing well in this class and you're understanding this material, that's what we want you to help people with. So if you can do well at this, that's good enough for us. And so um, that plus some good people skills and maybe you'd be a great section leader right away after this quarter. So I encourage you to, to give it a, a thought. Uh, do you have another question? Yeah, I have a question. So uh, how many hours per week yeah, hours per week varies a lot from quarter to quarter in which class you're section leading. Um, I think you can typically expect for your first quarter to be on the order of 15 to 20 hours a week. Um, that changes a lot based on like how enrollment sizes look for the quarter, what section sizes are, um, how many quarters of experience you have, lots of factors. But we're always looking to uh, make the workload a few hours per week. But you can also always add hours by going to the layer for extra time or whatever. Like It's really up to you like at some minimum. Yeah. Okay, well, um, if you have any other questions, please email <coughs> Colin and the other coordinators at cs198 at cs.stanford or visit their website for some more info about the section leading program. All right, once again, thanks, uh, Colin. Appreciate your time. Um, so now let's talk about linked lists. Um, last time I talked to you about pointers. What is a pointer? This, is, this counts as the section leader interview, starting now. <laughs> What's a pointer? Go. Uh, your hand was up first. Yeah, go ahead. Effective way uh, uh, that does, uh, that does, that does stores a place in memory of something else, uh, whether yeah. that be an object, another end, a primitive, et cetera. That's right. It stores the memory address of something else. And the something could be, as you say, it could be anything. It could be an int, it could be an object, it could be an array, a vector. Right, Store, a pointer stores the memory address of some other value. Okay, great. Um, how are pointers related to building a linked list? Why do I need to know pointers to make a linked list? In the very back, yeah. In the linked list, each element of the list has a pointer to the next element of the list. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the, the nodes, the elements of the list, they store little pointers from one element to the next, and we link them all together with these pointers, and that's our list. Right, yeah, you guys remember, you guys have the right idea. Let's pick up from there. So, you know, you say the word new to make an object on this heap. Remember we talked about this stack and this heap. I really want to stress that every time you make a node, a linked list node, to store some data, you're always going to use this new syntax. You never just say list node n semicolon. You always say list node star n equals new list node. You always make these things as pointers and not only as pointers, but as heap pointers, which is when you say this new keyword. And uh, you know, I would understand if that part of the lecture on Monday was the most fuzzy, but I just what I really want you to remember is that we need to build all of our nodes this way. If you don't, the memory will not live on long enough to be usable in our program. It'll lead to bugs or crashes. It won't work the right way. So when you make list nodes, you make them with this kind of syntax. So uh, we made these list node structures that have pointers from one node to the next. And at the end of the list, um, we have this null pointer of a value of zero to indicate there's not another node um, after that. Yeah? So uh, why do you have to particularly use the keyword new? Like, 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 what's the advantage of doing that? Like, why do you have to use the keyword new? Well, I mean, the new keyword is a, is a word that causes several things to happen. When you say new, the C++ uh, system goes and gets a chunk of heap memory and the amount of that chunk that it gets is the size in bytes of an object of that type. And so it goes and it sets aside, it allocates a block of memory of that size. And then if you have some kind of constructor with parameters, it runs that on an object there of that size. 
and then it returns the starting memory address of it to you. So all of those things happen when you say new. If you don't say new, it does not go and make memory on the heap. And the making the memory on the heap to store this object is really crucial for these examples. So that's why we say new uh, here. Wait, so that's, that's what I was wondering, like, why is it crucial to store it on the heap? Oh, why, why is it crucial to store it on the heap? Well, I, I think I sort of want to give a short answer to that, which is that, like, you know, you'll make these chains of nodes like this. We, we wrote code kind of like this uh, Monday at the end of lecture. And, like, you always have some stuff that's on the stack, like any local variables in main or functions that are called by main, those are on the stack. Usually what you do is you keep a pointer on the stack that points to the front of the list of things that's on the heap. And so when I draw these pictures, I have been drawing the heap as a cloud or something. I don't want to draw clouds every single time I draw a linked list. I just sort of want it to be implicit that it's on the heap. So in general, when I draw these pictures, I'm just not going to draw the cloud or really draw the stack. I'm just going to draw this front pointer that points to this stuff. And just implicitly, this part's on the stack and all of this part's on the heap. And why this has to be on the heap is because if main calls function A and A calls function B and B calls function C and function C makes the linked list chain, the instant that function C returns, the whole chain of memory gets freed up, thrown out. That's how the stack behaves. And I might not want that. I might want function C to make the linked list and then the list lives on after C is, is done running. Um, so you have to store these things on the heap in order for them to sort of live long enough to be useful. I think what's confusing is like, well, wait, I, I use things like vectors, I use things like strings, and I don't have to say new and heap for those, so why do I have to do that here? Well, the reason that that's different is because inside of a vector, if you looked in the code of a vector, it allocates an array of memory using the word new, putting it on the heap. <laughs> And when you return the vector, it sort of like hands that pointer around and it does some stuff. And so it does the right thing. But like basically anything that you are returning that's complicated, it probably is internally doing heap stuff to live longer than your function. And so we just never had to deal with it before because these libraries and collections and things that we have been using have these sort of uh, internals that did this for us. So that's why suddenly we have to do this thing that we never had to do before. We suddenly have to worry about this heap thing that never was discussed until uh, today's, uh, this week's lectures. Yeah. So in your example, if C makes a linked list and then returns it, is it still like freed up? Or if function C makes a linked list using new, using the heap? Or uh, if it made it on the stack and then returned that? If it made all of it on the stack, like it said, list node front semicolon without a star, list node number two, list node number three, list node number four. It could link them all together, but they would all be linked together in the stack, pointing up and down within the stack somewhere. And then the moment that function C returned, all of that stack memory would get collapsed out. And so all those nodes would basically get erased. So they'd be gone. You could return, but what you'd be returning would probably be like the front node, but you'd be returning like a pointer to memory that was getting scrubbed out. So it's like, it's like writing down your friend's home address, and then tomorrow they bulldoze their house. Well, you still hold on to their address, but if you go there, there's just a pile of rubble waiting for you. You know, the house is not there. So it's not like, ha, 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 I saved the house from demolition because I wrote the address of the house down. It's not quite how it works. Like, this is more like building a house up in the fucking clouds, and then the bulldozer can't hit it or something. I don't know what the analogy is here, but, but uh, I think my mixed metaphor ran away from me or something. But uh, it's like that movie Up or something. I don't know. Yeah. OK, so that's kind of where we are. I would, I would understand if some of this stuff's a little murky, like what heap, what is all this? I will say I don't think you need to know in detail what the heck is all that stuff about. I think the main thing is you need to remember that when you're doing these nodes and you create nodes, you have to use this syntax. All of my examples will do that. You should always do that. You know, the, the stack and heap stuff, I'm telling you about it because I figure you guys are X, you probably care about that. But it's, that's more of a like 107 domain. If you take 107, you do a whole bunch of stuff with how the memory looks and if I allocate this, where does that go? And what happens if I go to this pointer and then move a forward by 10 bytes, what happens? You know, you're gonna do a ton of that stuff. I don't wanna do a ton of that because they're gonna do that for you. You're gonna teach, they're gonna teach you all about that. So anyway, that's how you make a uh, chain of nodes, okay? Um, and one thing I want to point out about it, I said this already, but usually what you do is you only keep a pointer to the front of the list. 
you could keep like front points here and second node points here and third node points here. So main has all these local variables pointing to each node. That would be great because you could just really quickly use any pointer to talk to any node and stuff. But actually what we do is we sort of figure, well, the front is good enough because from the front you could just follow the pointers and reach all the other nodes. So just having a pointer to the front is good enough. Now it only goes one direction. If you're, if you're looking at this node, you can't go like backwards or something because there's no pointer from here to find the memory address to jump back to there. You know, it's a one directional link. But that's reachable, everything's reachable. So now if you want to hand somebody the whole list, here's this link list I made. You just hand them this pointer, this front pointer. You give them a memory address of this node and now they can look at all of it. Of course the drawback is that they have to hop, 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 hop from one node to the next if they want to look at all the nodes. But that's okay, this is good enough. So normally we only talk about the front or the start or some kind of head name for the front of the list. Okay? So uh, I want to talk about when you, when you have assignment statements in your code, equal statements that involve pointers, what does the code do? And I think you have to build intuitions about this and drawing pictures is really helpful. You definitely want to go to your section this week because you're going to practice a bunch of linked list stuff and you draw pictures of nodes and stuff. So whenever you say, um, left side equals right side, if you're talking about pointers, then I would distinguish between variables and values that are stored in variables. So I have the following uh, picture. I have this, this chain here. I have a pointer, a linked list pointer called A, which points to a node, and that node has a next pointer, which points to another node, and that node has a next pointer which stores null, so it doesn't point to any node. So that's what I have right now. And in this program, if I wrote a arrow next equals p, I want you to understand what that statement means. Now what's p? I, I, p isn't a thing, p is just anything. But what does it mean when I say a next equals? Well, a is this, and a arrow next, remember what that arrow operator means. Arrow means follow the pointer to the thing that it points at. It's the dereference operator. So a arrow next means a follow the arrow next equals, that means set this thing to point at somewhere. a arrow next equals p means make this thing point at whatever p is. So if I had some node b that was like here and I said a arrow next equals b, this next would point up to b here. You know? Now conversely, if I flip this around, if I flip the assignment statement around and I said p equals a arrow next, you might imagine that it would make p point at this, because this is a arrow next, right? But you don't really point at a pointer. If you say p equals a arrow next, what that means is make p point to the same place that a next points. So like if a next is this and it points at there, there then make whatever p is also point there. So point to number two in my diagram. And so I think for some students that's kind of confusing. What, what, it seems like pointers do two different things if you have them on two different sides of the equal sign. I guess if you want to be really literal about this, like this next isn't really an arrow, it stores a number. It stores a memory address, right? And so the memory address stored in here, if I set something else equal to that, I'm saying whatever that other thing is, put the same memory address in the other thing. Conceptually, that means they will point, both have arrows pointing to the same other place. But there's no arrows, right? The arrows are for our small human brains. So that's kind of like the intuition of number two here. Number one, when I say a arrow next equals, I'm saying go to this variable and change the number stored in it to be equal to some other number, which conceptually means make it point at some other thing. So anyway, I just want you to have this general intuition of kind of what it means when you write these assignment statements with pointers. You need to have this intuition because the whole idea of building linked list means like manipulating arrows to point to different stuff than they used to point at. So you have to be able to do these kind of statements to build a linked list properly. Okay? So let's, let's try it out. Let's practice a little bit. Oh, so sorry. Here, here's an example. Um, if, I, if I have this picture here, and just to be really clear, when I, when I have this thing that says A, A is a list node star. It's a list node pointer that points to this thing is a list node object, right? Okay. So when I say a arrow next equals b arrow next, I'm saying make this point where that points at. 
So make this point where B next points at. Make this point fair. Oops, the animation doesn't work on my Linux very well. But that's what that statement does. OK. So how would you make this picture turn into that picture? Where list is a pointer, list node pointer. Take a look. Who's brave? Who's got an answer uh, and why? Raise your hand. Um, what do you say? I say it's C. Um, C. Because list next is the arrow between list and the first one. List next next is the arrow between the one that has 10 and the one that has 20. And list next 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 would create the third arrow. So I think you might be off by one. Let, let me trace her and see. Um, so list is here. List arrow means follow this. So now I'm here. Now I say next, that's here. Now I say arrow, follow that. Now I say next, that's here. Now I have arrow, follow that. So I think this line of code would set that, but there is no that. We only have this, right? So I think the pointer I want to change is list next next, I want to change him to point at a new node. So I think it's, um, I think it's B. But, like, look, like, I wouldn't feel too bad being off by one. Like, this is the most common stuff people goof up. They add an extra arrow next, they have one too few arrow next. Like, this is exactly the sort of reason people need lots of practice with like this. It's really easy to be off by one, and I think you just have to kind of draw the pictures and count, count across them a bunch of times to get good. Yeah. Wait, so uh, what is list exactly? Is it, is it the first element? Or? List is a pointer, and oh, these so colored boxes are the actual object. So this pointer points to the first object, and that object has a next pointer that points to the second object. And so, so the first object is just list next? Uh, no, like if I want to print the 10, I say list arrow data. I don't, I don't say next. I think that's another thing a lot of students do when they're first doing this. They're like, oh, well, list is here. So if I want to go to the first actual node, I have to say list arrow next, because next is what like moves you forward or something. Right? I mean, and kind of yes, but actually what moves you forward is the minus greater than operator. The arrow operator is really what walks you forward. So if you say list, arrow, now I'm looking at this. And then if I say data, that's this. If I want to go to the 20, I say list, go forward, arrow. <coughs> Look at the next, follow that arrow, 20. Or list, arrow, next, arrow, data is the 20. Again, practice, 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 practice. Let's do another one. How do I turn this picture into this? So the last one, the previous slide was I added something at the back here. This slide, I'm adding something before the other elements. Um, and so what I did here is like for the starters, I made a new node called temp that stores a new node with a 30 in it. What do I write in order to, uh, what pair of statements horizontally will attach the 30 node in the right place? What do you say? A. A. So um, I like to draw pictures. So if I have temp, I'll just write T. Temp is a variable that points to a new box that has a 30 in it. Right? <laughs> Looks good. Um, now you're saying A. So you're saying temp next should point where list points. So this next right here should point to the same place that list points. Actually, I guess I'm, I'm working on this top half of the slide. So this next should point to the same place that list points, like that, right? Okay. By the way, one thing just to notice, it might look like, hey, the 30 is connected now. 30 goes to 10, goes to 20. I'm done. I built the 30 to 10, 20. But that's not enough because I also, when you say list, List should start you at the 30 as well. So do you understand? Like, it, you can sometimes have these multiple entry points into the same chain, where like this guy does connect to these two, 
But if you say list arrow data, you don't get 30, you get 10 still, because list still points to the node that it pointed at before. So yeah, the next one would say make list point where temp points. So don't make it point there anymore. Make it point to there. So now I know my diagram is a little messy, but like list, if you follow that point of view, you get here, you get the 30. And then if you follow his next point of view, you get the, the 10. And the, so that's, that works, right? Make sense? Uh, what if I had done these in the other order? Uh, what if I had written the, trying to erase here. So first I do list equals temp, and then second I do temp next equals list. If I did that, then I would say list equals temp, so I'll make this guy point like that, right? And then I say temp next equals list. Temp is here, temp next is this thing. Make it point where list points. Where's that? Whoa, I'm pointing at myself, whoa. So do you see that if I flip the order of the two commands, I would actually break everything? I would, I would replace the list with a one element list that reported, repeated looping circle to itself, you know, and I would lose my pointer to these other elements. They would be um, unreachable. I would have no pointer that would get me to these things. Do you see that? We call that a memory leak because I lost track of that memory, I can't reclaim it ever again. Uh, when I was a young boy <laughs> learning about linked lists, my section leader, Jamie, who was delightful, she told me to think of them as though they had little balloons attached to them. And the pointers are like the little strings that you hold on to. And so like, you know, list is like me, the little boy with a with string or whatever. She was a better artist than I am, but little boy has a string or whatever and there's a there's a balloon attached to this guy and he's got a little string and he's got a little balloon attached to him and stuff and then the little boy says oh wow look at this other box over here wow that box is so cool and it's got a 30 in it wow neat maybe I'll let go of my string and I'll reach over and I'll attach my string to him oh no I lost my string and then they sail away right so I mean there's something like that kind of going on here uh, um, I don't know what mental picture or analogy works the best for you, but if you don't retain any pointer that gets you to a given node or a chain of pointers that would get you to a given node, then it's just gone and you can't find it again. You've leaked the memory. Um, that's bad. So the order of statements matters a lot. You are correct that answer A was the right one. Let's do one more. So I want to turn this picture into this picture. So I'm doing a lot more manipulations now. So I, here's, here's how I think I want to do this. Um, I'm going to open a text editor. I'm going to try to shrink it so that it doesn't cover the whole picture there. And I'm going to try to type, I want you to tell me individual statements and then I'll draw, I'll write the code down that you tell me and then I'll try to draw the picture too. So um, somebody tell me a statement that will help make progress toward turning this into that. List one next equals list two. List one next equals list two. So that will make it, so list one is here, list one next is here. You want him to point where list two points, so you want me to do that. Okay, but then I lost my little balloon is going to float away this guy, right? <laughs> I, I think we need to do that. I just might need to do some stuff before I do that, right? So maybe, oops, what did I do? Uh, help me with um, maybe what would I do before this line of code? If you want to make a temp, I guess that's fine. Make a temp if you want. List node temp equals. Now, um, one interesting thing. I just told you a few minutes ago, every time you declare a node, you say star node and you say it equals a new node. So let's remember what new means. It means go to the heap and set aside memory and actually create a whole node. That's different from having a pointer to a node. You could have lots of pointers to the same node 
And that means all those little pointers are out on the stack and the one node is on the heap and they're all pointing to him. If you said list node star temp equals, let's say, list one, okay, if you wrote that, what that would mean would be you'd make a little pointer called, uh, you know, temp, I'll just write a T, and he points where list one points. That's what that line of code means. But it, it doesn't make a whole copy of the node object. It's just that both of those pointers point at the same object, okay? So now if I were to go on and say list one equals, you know, whatever, null pointer, then that would cut this string, but the balloons don't fly away because I attached a second string before I cut the first string. So you can do stuff like that if you think it'll help you solve this problem. I just want to emphasize, like, I didn't say new something something because that would make a fifth box appear on the picture, a fifth gray box, and I don't need a fifth gray box. So uh, with that in mind, I mean, I just, these lines of code are not necessarily ones that actually help us. What, what would you add to the code we have so far? Yeah, in the back. Uh, what do you, sorry, what do you want me to do? List two dot. Okay, make it so that, hold on, let me. I thought this would work really well, and it's not sure if that's the case or not. Uh, here. Uh, okay, there. <laughs> uh, so you want me to make this equal to list two next. So you want temp to point where list two next points at. So you want temp to look like that, right? Hey, I have a tip for you. If you don't have a red marker that draws all over your screen, one thing you could do is on each line, you can write a little comment like temp points at the 40 node. You know, this is also very nice of you if you do that when you're on a test. You're not required to comment on a test, but if you do that, it'll help the section leader understand what the heck you're trying to do because <laughs> you might have messed it up. So the comments might help. Okay, so temp points at 40. I know my font is a little small. Here, I'm gonna say uh, list node temp, and then I'm gonna break the line like that so you can see the, the line on a bigger font. Okay, temp points to 40, now what do you want that for? Do you wanna give me one more line after that? Uh, yeah, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna say list2.next now gets list1.next. <laughs> list2.next equals list1.next. So, List two next is this pointer right here, and you're saying you want it to not point at that anymore, but you want it to point where list one next points. List one points there, list one next points there. So you want this to go like that. The 30 goes to the 20. So again, I might write a little comment here, like 30 arrow 20. Okay, sort of line these up so they're easy to read. Something like that. Okay. That's good. Give me some more uh, lines of code. Well, we have, we have this one here, list one next equals list two. Is that okay to have now? Yeah. So if I do that next, <laughs> list one next equals list two. So now I don't want this guy pointing here anymore. I want him pointing where list two points. So make that point there. So that is doing, after the 10, I want to point to the 30, like that. Is that right? Okay. Uh, what else do we need to do in the back? Yeah. And then I think you finish with list two equals temp. List two equals temp. So I didn't say any nexts there. You don't always have to say next. I'm saying I want this list two front arrow here not to point to the 30 anymore, but to point to the 40. So cut this and make it point like that. And you claim that we're done. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, if you really want to clean up, you could say temp equals null pointer, which would cut this string, but you don't have to do that. That's fine. Um, so now what it, let, me, let me walk it through and see if we've got it right. So if you follow list one, I need to get to the 10 first, which I do. And then if I go to the next one, I should get to the 30, and I do. And then if I go to the next of that, I need to get to the 20, which I do. And then if I try to go next from that, it should be null. So that whole chain looks right. I know it's all diagonal and stuff all over the place, but the, the pictures are just fake for our dumb brains, right? So yes, those are the right sequence of jumps to get to the right sequence of nodes. And then list two should get me just to the 40 and then nothing else. It takes me just to the 40 and then null after. So we did it, bless you. So that's, yeah, those sequence of commands will change the top picture into the bottom picture. 
those are not the only sequence of commands. If you have a different solution, there, there's probably a bunch of different ways you could you could make that uh, that change to those pointers. And um, go try it if you want to see. Yeah. Could you have done it with that at the beginning, so direct <coughs> from this to point to uh, forty? Um, you can do it without a temp. You just have to be careful not to cut the string and lose your balloons. Like if you said list two, just go straight to the forty, you'll lose the thirty. Okay. So. You could do some tricks like, you know, maybe temporarily make the next of the 40 point to the 30, and then make this point to the 40, and then you basically flip those two, and now it's easier to remove the 30 without losing some. You could do stuff like that. You can think of these ending null guys here as being like temporaries in a way. So if your goal is to like not use a temporary variable, you can accomplish that goal, but I don't, you know, occasionally I'll give you a question like this and I'll say, do it with no temporary pointers or whatever, and that would be maybe some trick you but in general, I'll let you make a temporary pointer if you need one. What do you think? Does this sort of mostly make sense? Do you have questions about these uh, these lines here? Soon-ish, you'll be doing a homework assignment, and you'll be basically doing this, and it's not going to work <laughs> because you will have written it, and it's the first time you've ever tried, and it won't be right. And it, so it's hard because you'll run the program and your, your program will crash. You'll get a segmentation fault because some pointer is going to trail off into the abyss and you'll follow the pointer and the program will crash. So what you want to do is write out a picture, right? So you have your lines of code that you wrote, draw a picture and then trace through each line. And if it seems like it should be doing the right thing but it isn't, then frankly you probably are drawing the wrong picture. <laughs> Like maybe your interpretation of your code might be wrong. So you show your section leader the code, you show the section leader the picture in the layer, and they walk through it with you, and maybe they'll help you see, oh, no, 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 actually this changes that pointer, not that pointer. And so that's how the section leader can really help you debug this kind of code. But you need the pictures. It's really hard to do this without pictures. Even I, like today, you know, when I come think of test questions involving pointers, I draw these dumb pictures, and I draw the little arrows, and I squiggle them out. And so uh, that's, that's OK to do that. Okay, um, so, okay, it gets interesting, like, like those little pictures that I did, th that's great, but, but a linked list is potentially this long chain of nodes and we're going to be manipulating it and stuff, so what do you do when you have this really long chain? You might not even know how long the chain is. You might say, well, where does it store the, the size or the length of the list? Well, it doesn't really store it anywhere. I mean, I guess we could keep an int or something, but we don't necessarily even know how many nodes there are. What if we just have a note, somebody hands us a pointer to the front of a chain, and that's all we have, we don't know the exact length, and we want to print all the values, okay? We want to print all the values. So, and I mean, I have, I have a cute creator project where we made a chain of values, oops, uh, here. So I stored this chain and if I want to loop over them, if it were an array or a vector, I'd say for int i goes from zero to size, or I'd do a for each loop or whatever, and those don't really work here because I don't have a size and for each doesn't understand this pointer stuff. So how would I make it so that I could print all of these values? I mean, if I want to print a single value, I can do it like this. I can say print node one data. And then if I want to print the next value, I could say print like uh, space plus node one next data. And then I could say print a space plus node next next data. You know, I could do like that, right? But that seems silly. I want to do some kind of loop here. I just don't know how many of these I'm going to need to do. Any, any suggestions? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you got the right idea. Like, make a loop that walks across the pointers until I hit the null and just print each one, like, kind of visit the nodes with pointers. Okay? So, uh, I'm going to distort slightly what you said to make it less good because I want to illustrate a common bug for, first. And then I'll do what you actually said, if you'll permit me. Um, so, okay. What if I just did like this? Uh, while something, I'll come back to the loop test in a second. I'll print node data plus a space or something. And then I sort of want to like advance to the next node. So like if I have these values right here, my node one is sort of like a pointer that points to here. And so this statement would print the 42. 
And then if I want to go to the next node, I could say node 1 equals his own next. So like set him equal to what his next variable points at. So in other words, after printing the 42, it will advance node 1 to point here. And then after it prints a negative 3, it'll advance the node pointer to point there and so on. Okay? So now we come back to here and you said like the place that you stop doing this is when you finally get to the point where you see a null, right? So I would say something like while node 1 isn't null putter, do that. Once it becomes null, stop, right? So let's, let's try it and then at the end I'll do C out endl uh, and maybe, maybe just to make it really clear, I'll do C out uh, my list is colon, okay? Yeah. So I compile it and I run it and oh, th this is, uh, I think this is something else. Wait, what is, what is this? 50, this is just some other stuff. Sorry. Um, sorry, that, that like crash isn't from us. Uh, ignore these other prints. That's some code we haven't written yet. My list is 42, negative three. Okay, so hey, it's like working. It's printing, right? Great. So what if I want to print the list two times? I'll just copy and paste all of this code, right? Just loop over the list two times. <laughs> it's okay, it's gonna be okay. My list is, it prints all the elements. My list is, it doesn't press any, print any elements. This size zero stuff, I, let me just turn that off. Where is that? Uh, there. So, so why does it print the list the first time and then it prints nothing the second time? Yes? All the balloons went away. Yeah, <laughs> that's one way to say it. Yeah. Um, so uh, again, pictures are helpful. So I have list that points to that first node or, or front or whatever <laughs> node one. I don't know what I call my variable, but I print the ten and then I say set him equal to what his next points at. So now he points at this one, but I lost the balloon. And then I print this one and I say point to the next one but I'm losing my pointers to these original nodes by moving the front <laughs> forward, do you understand? So like, I have this, and list points there, and then when I say list equals list next, it changes list to point there, right? And then after I print the 20, it changes list to point wherever, there. But I'm gonna get to the point where all these nodes are just sitting here, and they still exist, they still have data stored in them, and they still point to each other, and they eventually connect to the part that I'm pointing at, but nobody points to them. Do you understand? It's like, um, it's like, you know, on Twitter, you know, you could like follow somebody famous or cool or whatever, you're like pointing at them. So like you are watching them, but like they're not watching you. It's like a one directional relationship here, you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, me and Scarlett Johansson and like Johnny Depp, we're all tight. We're all like friends on Twitter and stuff. It's like, no, no, you follow them. They don't follow you. You're not gonna get invited to their parties and stuff, right? So like, I think what's happening here is these guys might look like they're still connected to the chain, but they just, they're not because no one can reach them. They are pointing at the parts of the chain that are still reachable, but they themselves are not reachable. So that's important distinction. Yeah. Could you um, could you manually edit uh, the value of of list to uh, to like look through the memory itself and find its way back? Well, I, you said yeah. How do I fix this? How do, can I make the list somehow find its way back or something? I, I think the secret is just a minute ago we learned about making a temporary variable, and I think that's kind of what you were actually telling me to do. But I pretended you didn't say that, and so. Instead of doing this, let's make it so that we make some kind of temp or current pointer and set it equal to the front of the list or whatever the variable name is for our front pointer. And so it will be created as another arrow that points to the start. And if I follow it and print its data, the same 10 will come out. And if I set current equals current next, the current will, oops, uh, the current will now point to the 20. And if I say it again, current equals current next, then the current will point to the 30, and so on. And so I can walk through the nodes using this pointer, but I don't lose my balloon string to the front of the list, so I don't damage anything. So anyway, back to this program back here. Um, instead of saying this, what I'll do is I'll say list node current cur or current or something equals node one, the front one, 
and then I'll say while the current node is not null pointer, print its data and go to its next. And then if I want to do it again, I will copy paste this same code again, except I don't redeclare the type, I just say current. And so now if I compile that and I run it, I get the whole list twice, I didn't lose it, okay? Got it? Um, so a lot of times you want to write these kinds of operations as functions. So you could take this exact piece of code right here and you could pull it out and you could call it print. If you pass me a list node front, I will print that list for you. So I wrote a, fun a list, a node, a list, link list uh, function. Can you maybe see the start of like how we could build a, co a collection here? I'll write an add function and a remove function and a print function and a whatever function and all of them will walk chains of pointers of stuff. Collectively, we will have built the operations that a vector has or that a linked list has or, or whatever. You understand? Yeah, question. So speaking of adding in add <coughs> Right, well, let's, let's talk about that right now. I don't think I'm gonna get to deleting today, so let's do adding. I think we can get to that. Let's talk about adding something to the end of a list. So um, here, I would say my list is, and then I would write print node one. I'd pass node one as the front. If I wanna add something to the end of the list, so I've got a chain of nodes. Do I have a picture of this in my slide? Where is it? Uh, here, okay, here. So I've got a chain of nodes, and I want to add a new node at the end. That's what the add method does on a vector or a link list. So let's write that. So the basic idea is I have to get to the end of the list and then attach a new box there, right? So if I, if I want to make a new box, maybe list node pointer new node is a new list node. Maybe, maybe I want to add the value 8888 eight, 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 to the end of the list. So there's the new node, attach it to the end. So I think what you need to do is you need to like walk to the end of the list so that I can put it there. Because I don't have a direct pointer that points to the end of the list. You could have one, but I don't. So how do you walk to the end of the list? It's a little bit like printing a list, right? So you say list node current equals node one, the front. And then while the current isn't null, I can say current equals current next. And like what I want is I want to make it so that I'm waiting right here and then I can attach him right here, right? So now let's think very carefully for a second about the loop condition. I want current to be this node so that I can attach a new next person after him, right? If current is pointing at this node, I want the loop to stop. <coughs> what will be true when I'm pointing at this node? Next is null. My next will be null. It's not that current will be null. Current is not null. Current is pointing at this. But the next ahead of me is null. When that's the case, I want this loop to stop. Do you understand? So it's important to point out that like this loop should not loop until current is null. It should loop until current next is null. So walk forward until current has no next. And then once I get there, make current next point at the new node. Make current next point at the new node. So make current next point at <coughs> the new node that I constructed. Yeah. What if the list is empty? Yeah, what if the list is empty? So that code I just wrote walks an existing list, but it might not work for an empty list. So how would I handle that? So I just need some sort of like if empty, like I know this list in my main here isn't empty, but so let's be general. So if it's empty, I want to do something else, but if it's not empty, I want to do this. So if the list is empty, how do you know if a list is empty? What signifies an empty list, do you think? 
the very first front pointer doesn't point to anything. There's no nodes there. So if the node one, the front, is null putter, if that's the case, I think I have a picture for that. I realize I'm almost out of time. If the list is empty, then the front is null. I want to make it so that it's this way afterward, right? So how do I do that? I want to make the front point at a new node. So I should just say node one points at a new node, like that, okay? Now, the last thing I'll tell you, I'm, I'm out of time, but I have one more sort of sentence I want to say here. The last thing I'll tell you is if you take this and you want to turn this into a function, so you cut this and you paste it and you go down to like, I have, a, I have an add method somewhere, add right here. So if I paste this, and instead of 8888, I write value. All of this code is still correct, but if I run this and then I print the thing, it won't always work. And I'll give you the one sentence reason why, and then we'll explain why on Friday. The one sentence reason why is I have to pass this pointer by reference. I have to call this passing a reference to the pointer to the front of the list. And now shit's getting real. <laughs> so look, uh, we'll explain why. We'll talk about this more on Friday, but I'm out of time. So go to your section. I'll see you on Friday. We'll resume there. Thanks.